Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Right, let's make a start. So I'm in the shading tab. I'm going to enable the viewport shading and uh, I've already got a principled shader applied to my fabric which I've set up in the modifier stack. Check out my other video on how to put this together if you'd like to know more. Now for the hound's tooth pattern we're going to do three things, four things in fact. We're going to create the pattern, we're going to create controls for the scale and position, controls for the color of the pattern and the fabric, and then also some controls for some texture just to give it a little bit more realism. So let's make a start. I'm going to begin by adding a checker texture. So shift A, search, and then checker texture. We're going to plug the factor from that into the base color of the principled shader. Looks weird right now. That's fine. In fact, what I'm going to do is switch to the top view get rid of this cylinder so you can see better what's going on and I'll flatten out my fabric. So we've got a checker texture. That's fairly self-explanatory. I am going to just change these colors to black and white. We're going to make changes to the, um, we're going to add controls for color later. So this might not actually matter too much, but we'll go with it for now. I'm going to add another tech checker texture uh, we'll change the scale on both of these to 2. I'm going to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node to the top checker texture and change that to the UV output of the texture coordinate. I'm going to add a value node in here and plug that into the scale. Now that's kind of messed things up right now, but that's fine. We'll come back to it in a second. I'm going to add another checker uh, mapping node in here. In fact, I'm going to add two. I'm going to take the vector output from the mapping node up here and plug that into both of these mapping nodes. This one I'm going to plug into the bottom checker texture. And then I'm also going to add a Voronoi texture which is going to take the vector from the bottom mapping node. In fact, actually it's not. And I'm going to change that to one dimension, so 1D in here. And then I'm going to plug the vector output from this mapping node into the W value here. I'm going to add a math node just after the Voronoi texture and change it to less than. Take the distance value into the value of the math node. And then we're going to mix a couple of things. The first being the two checker textures. Let's get rid of that viewer. Now we're going to take the factor from this checker texture and plug it into the factor of this mix node. Take the factor from the top checker texture and put it into color 2. Disconnect the color from there and change this to white. 
We're then going to mix this math node with that mix node. And we need a factor for this. So we're going to take that from this checker texture. We need to invert what's coming out of here. So we'll add an invert node. Leave that set to one. And we'll take the factor from the second checker texture to create the factor on this inversion. We're going to take the scale on the Voronoi texture down to, actually we'll put it up to six and take the randomness down to zero. And we need something going on here. So because we've got a zero value, nothing's happening over here. So we're going to put, let's say 50. Oops, no, 10. Then you can see. So we've got lots of squares going on here. the Z value here on the first mapping node, I'm going to put the rotation as 180. On the second mapping node, change the X scale to zero. On the third mapping node, change the X location to 0.125 and the Z rotation as 90. Let's see what's going on. So we have got UV output. On the math node, I'm going to change the threshold to 0.25, and that's the last change. You can see here now the overall hound's tooth patterning. So basically, all of this lot, uh, in fact, actually, these three give us our scale and position. And this lot gives us our patterning. So let's tidy this up a bit. I'm using the node wrangler to give myself a frame. Changing those values to basically remind myself what each section does. The pattern. So the pattern you shouldn't really need to change any settings on. It's only really this value number here to change the scale. Right. Now we've got the pattern, let's deal with the color. So we're gonna add a color ramp here and set the color interpolation mode to constant. And basically this color on the right it's going to be the background color and this color on the left will be the pattern color. So as you can see, I can change both the hound's tooth color and the background color. Ooh. Yeesh, that's not easy on the eyes, is it? Anyway, so you get the idea. 
Now it should be fairly obvious what that does, but I'm just going to add a frame. Just again to remind myself. And then just for a bit of realism, I'm going to add some random texture. So let's grab ourselves a noise texture. A color ramp. And a bump node. Plug the bump node into the normal. Let's decrease the strength and the distance to 0.1. Leave the color ramp as it is, but plug that into the height of the bump node. Take the factor from the noise texture into the color ramp. Change the scale and the detail to 15 and the roughness to 1. Leave the distortion as 0. And then we're going to use the same um, UV output from the texture coordinate into the vector of the noise texture. So let's go back to my camera view, go back to the draped fabric. Oh, what's happened there? Turns out I forgot to bake. So remember always to go into your cloth settings and bake it in the cache. That helps a lot. There we go. So there's our hound's tooth so far. In fact, I'm gonna change those colors back so it makes more sense. Okay, stop fiddling. Right, so we've got our texture. Let's just preview that. So yeah, it's just basically a little bit of bumping. So it's not too much. It just plays with the light so that um, it looks a little bit more real. Now on that basis, we do need to make some changes in the principled shader. And that is to drop the specular to 0 0.1, the tint to 0.5, roughness to 0.85. And that should be it. So let's pop a frame around that. And that is our shader done. So we've got scale and position, pattern, color, and texture all plugged into the principal shader with a few extra mods. And that gives us our hound's tooth. And basically, like I say, apart from the color and the value, there's very little else to change. So if we just increase this a bit, you can see how that kind of reduces the scale. So let's send that to render and see what we get. And there we go, our hound's tooth fabric. I hope you found this useful and will give the video a thumbs up and of course, subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time.